the start of a brand new series, a Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild, Part 1, taking the engine apart to see how well it's been made. And don't worry regular viewers, I have not forgotten there are a couple of series I need to finish. The one I'm working on currently is fitting the reversing gear to a Stuart No. 70 engine, but unfortunately I've lost the drawing. During the move I put it somewhere safe so I would not lose it, and I've lost it. And also, I haven't forgotten that I've not yet finished the series all about building two Blackgate's twin oscillating cylinder steam engines. So don't worry, I always finish what I start. I bought this Stuart Beam engine in with a collection of other engines fairly recently. And I sold everything else, but this one was incomplete and it wasn't perfect. Well, it was far from perfect. So I think it's now time to rebuild it. I'm not impressed with the turning on the end of the crankshaft, but when I measure it with the micrometer, it's exactly 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, so when I make a new crank web for it, it should fit perfectly with some Loctite, with plenty of grooves to hold the Loctite. Here's the eccentric gun in the box, and in this clip I'm releasing the piston rod, so now I can dismantle the upper part of the engine. I'm releasing the Watts parallel motion from where it's mounted to the two gun metal brackets. Generally speaking, the machining quality of this engine, well apart from the end of the crankshaft, is very good indeed. But I'm already getting the feeling that more than one person's worked on this engine. I don't think the person who machined the engine actually assembled it. I'll find out more about this the deeper I go inside it and have a look at it. If I wanted to bodge it, I could just bolt everything up and make it run quite easily, but I don't like the colour of it, I'm really sorry. Steam engines should not be painted mammod green, and red, unless of course they are Mammoth steam engines, so I'm going to repaint the engine in a more sensible colour. And this of course is my opinion, some people like Mammoth green on steam engines other than Mammoths, I personally don't. And bright red plumber blocks are fairly offensive to my sight. I'm just checking the fit of these bearings on the pin that holds the beam, and the fit's quite good, a very good bearing fit. The paintwork on the column has cracked up badly, and this is not because it's very old cracked paint, probably due to the fact that too much paint was applied in one coat. A closer look at the bearings shows that these are not split bearings, they're actually bushes in split plumber blocks, and this is quite a good way of doing it on a small engine. So that means the bearings are not adjustable when they're worn, you just replace the bushes. But it's only a small engine, it's not a seriously big heavy duty one. The bearing plumber blocks are made from steel, and they're actually fabricated, they're bolted together. And in this clip, there's a bit of a miscalculation. The bolts are too close to the plumber block itself. And the solution to this is that someone's put the bolts in the lathe and rounded the edges. Often, during the fitting of parts onto a model steam plant or steam engine, the bolts can be too close to the parts. And it's impossible to get a socket in there to remove the bolt. A viewer recently was commenting on the bolt on the number 7A. And even though I explained that the socket wouldn't fit the bolt, he went on and on telling me how I should do it. I'm now going to permanently prove the point, and I don't wish to talk about it anymore. If the bolt is too close to the metal, then you cannot get a socket in, therefore you cannot take it out or tighten it. Instead, I'm carefully using an open-ended spanner, which is slow and a bit tedious, but does actually remove the bolt fine. This clip shows how the steel plumber blocks are made. And to be fair, they're very well made. The only thing wrong with them, in my opinion, is that they're painted red, bright red. I haven't chosen a colour for this engine yet, but I'm sort of warming to Crimson Lake, which is red, but it's Crimson Lake red, like on LMS steam locomotives. This is a bit odd. The 2BA bolt in this position on the engine is a different size to the rest. I'm having to use a different spanner. When I rebuild this engine, I'm going to standardise the fixtures, and I'm actually going to make the ones for the plumber blocks 2BA, but with smaller heads. And that way, I'll be able to use a socket to reassemble the engine. And in this clip, I'm showing using a socket to disassemble the engine, and that's not a problem, because in this case, the bolts are not too close to the metal part of the column. When I look at this column, I notice that the paint underneath the Mammoth green is Stuart Turner green, or Stuart Models green, whichever way you want to look at it. It's a darker green. It's normally actually, I think, Brunswick green, sometimes olive drab, but anyway, it's a dark green. Three of these are bolts, and the fourth one round the back is a stud with a nut on it. So I think what's been happening here is that whoever assembled this engine did not have enough fixings of the right size. 
hence the anomalies with the types of bolts used. Time to remove the pipework, this is fairly straightforward. I loosened it with a spanner and then just spun the whole assembly off. This came off quite easily without event, and in a similar way I removed the drain cock pipes and the exhaust pipe. If you look at the exhaust pipe manifold, and that's the part closest to the wood, it's got a very small hole down the centre. I think I'll modify the flange and make it take a quarter inch pipe instead. And that way I can use PM Research elbows as I normally do to pipe away the exhaust to the condenser. What I propose to do with this engine once I've finished it is build it into a steam plant using a very good boiler that I already have. It's a horizontal boiler and it's one that I featured a while back in a video series. Meanwhile, I'm trying to undo the bolts around the cylinder to free it from the engine bed plate, but I can't do that because they're spinning free, so it's time to remove the bed plate from the piece of mahogany that it's mounted on. None of the nuts and bolts on this engine are tight anyway, so I don't quite know what the plan was there. And the way the cylinder is fitted to the bed plate is cause for concern. It's a real mishmash of different kinds of bolts. Anyway, before I can take the cylinder off the bed plate, I need to remove this valve linkage support. And once again, because the bolts aren't too close to the main component, it's very easy to use a socket on the bolt head because there's plenty of space. This socket is slightly bigger than it needs to be, which is useful because I can move it at an angle, and it makes it easier to withdraw the bolt. Here's the same thing at the other side. First one, and then I'll lean the socket slightly to remove the second one. And here is the valve linkage from the engine, which is about to be put into the green box with all the other components. And now without further ado, I can remove the cylinder. It was a bit stubborn though, could use a socket on part of it, and then on the other part I had to use a screwdriver. And I wonder what's going on with the mounting plate for the cylinder itself. These are supposed to be countersunk bolts, but instead there's a hotchpotch of different fixings, some with lots of washers on because the cast iron base plate is already countersunk to take countersunk bolts, so one can only presume that, as I said earlier, the person who put this engine together didn't have enough suitable fixings at hand to complete the job. Usually when I go to Blackgate's engineering, I always buy extra nuts and bolts, just to keep my stock level fairly high, so that I don't run out of nuts and bolts at the wrong time. I certainly would not do the job this way. I'm wondering what the piston fits like. It slides up and down in the cylinder a little bit too easily. And yes, there's a bit of side play too. Sometimes these type of engines have piston rings made from cast iron. Alternatively, they can be fitted with a silicone o-ring as a piston ring, and sometimes even soft packings, which is just graphited yarn. There is nothing at all wrong with soft packings for pistons in steam engine cylinders. But as a general rule, if you're using soft packings, the piston has to be a good fit in the cylinder. This thing on the steam chest is really a governor assembly, but nobody's fitted a governor to it. I have a couple of quite nice microcosm governors. So I might even fit one of those to this engine. Sort of on a pedestal at the side, more like full-size practice. And that's about it really, the engine is in pieces. This is a tin of standard thinner. When you're using this stuff, it's probably a good idea to read the instructions, they're fairly scary. I'd just like to mention that in the new workshop, I am in a very well ventilated area. And in this clip, I'm pouring a generous amount of cellulose thinners, also known as lacquer thinner in the USA, into a polythene tub. And now, I'm adding all the painted parts and agitating the cellulose thinners with a paintbrush. And the paint is starting to dissolve already. So you've seen me painting. You've seen me painting fast and slow, and you've seen me leaving the paint to dry. So this is a new one. This is paint being dissolved by cellulose thinners, at the moment at high speed. And now for the purists in real time. There's nothing more I can do. I'm just going to leave the cellulose thinners to do its stuff and dissolve the paint, and I'll come back tomorrow to finish it. After a walk down the garden, which currently still resembles the Battle of the Somme, I went in the house, and on the doormat behind the door, I found an envelope which contained this. It was an invoice for £17.82, complete with a drawing for the reversing gear for the 7A. And as I only phoned Stuart Models yesterday afternoon, I was really pleased with this. So tomorrow I can continue with the 7A reversing gear. 
But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.